Hi, welcome to Coffee and Closers. I'm Mikhail Abador, and I want to personally invite you to join me and one of today's top performing sales stars for a cup of coffee and authentic conversation. And our collective goal is that you will walk away with tangible knowledge that you can apply to your sales efforts today. Are you ready? Grab a cup, fill it up, and let's get into another episode of Coffee and Closers. Closers, happy Q4. How are you? I'm Michael Abador. And for those of you that I have not met, um, I am the, uh, the, the host of Copy and Closers and the Chief Revenue Officer of Closers Media. What does Closers Media do? Well, last week, uh, we helped one of our clients have a massive three-deal week. You know who you are. <laughs> ring, ring. Congratulations, Proofpoint. Uh, last week was a lot of fun, and we're just getting started. Uh, for the rest of you, what we do is we offer hands-on sales training and coaching that is constantly evolving because myself, our coaches um, are selling in the field today, daily, weekly, and we're always updating our playbooks and our coaching and our training um, to make sure that uh, what we're, we're teaching or what we're helping guide, uh, when we're helping guide deals to close, that it is that we're reflecting today's market. And as you guys know, today's market is a funky place to be. So uh, we live in it daily to help you. Um, if you're looking at your pipeline and you're thinking there's room for improvement or you're looking at your pipeline and thinking, yeah, I could really use some expert help, hit me up, Nicola at closesmedia.com or uh, closesmedia.com website to learn a little bit more about us. We would love to help. So speaking of help and fantastic and, and amazing, today's guest, uh, Ryan Reisart, is, is a, he's a prospecting legend and it's Q4 and that's why we thought let's have him on the show. If you're unfamiliar with him, he is the co-founder of the Sales Developers huge name in the Bay Area that were uh, just acquired in 2019. Um, he's the co-author of one of the top rated sales books in existence today. It's called Outbound Sales, No Fluff. Um, he is one of the most watched and in my opinion, one of the most entertaining live recorded cold callers on LinkedIn today. We're gonna have sites to that and links to that in the chat in a bit here. And um, he's the director of sales at Tech Rocket Ship Connect and Sell. Please put your hands together for Mr. Ryan Reisart. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. Uh, super excited for the conversation today, and uh, appreciate you having me on on the show. Oh, absolutely, man. I'm I'm honored to have you. And you know, it is Q4, uh, and so what are people trying to do? They should be trying to close down everything they have in their pipe and uh, start stuff in uh, 2021. So I figured this could be serendipitous, perfect, perfect timing for you to be available and us to have you in the show. So thank you. Yeah, I'm 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 fired up for the conversation. So today's theme, um, as well as on the, on the socials, is called Pick Up the Phone. And it's obviously inspired by your, just, your, your contagious passion um, for that age-old tool uh, that we all leverage in sales called the phone. But um, before we do that, you know, we've had a chance to kind of get to know each other uh, briefly before this call and uh, before this show. And I'd love for you to tell us you know, a little bit about yourself, your sales story, and maybe something that the sales community doesn't know, but they should. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I got into sales, like actually most people got into sales, which is the, wasn't thinking I was going to be in sales route. Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, the first person in my family to go to college. You know, I grew up in a, a pretty, pretty rough area. Actually, if you look up the zip code, uh, in Washington state, uh, uh, there's a little area called Hilliard, Washington. So I'm, I'm from Hilliard, Washington. It's one of the poorest uh, areas in the state. Uh, lots of drugs, lots of uh, issues going on there. So I grew up there. Both my brother and sister are multiple times felons. My parents are janitors, uh, custo masters of the custodial arts. Janitors, if you want to be a dick about it, right? A little half-baked <laughs> thing there. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, they did their best. Uh, my, my, my dad is actually my stepdad, kind of one of those families, right? So my brother and sister are half brothers. My dad is a stepdad. So, you know, all that kind of crap that you hear about. Um, but, uh, you know, I went to college because I thought I wanted to be a teacher and a coach, um, really because those are the ones that got me through, right? Um, school, I was involved in everything you can think of uh, from a very young age. Like, I mean, literally everything from orchestra to sports to ASB, like all that stuff. I was that kind of person. Um, but it's really just because I never wanted to be at home. There's always issues going on, you know that type of environment, but went to college, um, on a math scholarship. Uh, and, uh, you know, I wasn't very good at many other subjects. I, I, uh, I excelled at math. Um, and, 
um, thought I'd be a math teacher and high school coach. Um, sports I did uh, in high school as a three-sport varsity athlete in football, wrestling, and soccer. So I was going to go back and I thought I'd coach, you know, football and and uh, and wrestling and soccer. That's what I was going to do. It was just that was my path. But I graduated in 2008, and um, that was like the most. I mean, that was the best time to graduate. You know, like it was like graduating right now. It's the best time ever, right? Yeah. Get out of school. <laughs> The market's yeah, fucking blooming, you know, it's just fantastic time to get out of school, right? <laughs> you know, the, the, uh, you know, this was like months before. When did you the, graduate? The, or sorry, you said you graduated in 2008. Is that what you just said? Can you imagine? Yeah, 2008. So I graduated yeah. a while back before that, but, um, you know, imagine the price tag too. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, um, it's, 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 it's crazy. I, yeah. I, I, well, I digress. Yeah, I got out of school. I got out of school at a perfect time, right? Where, you know, the housing market is just, just tumbling and things weren't going so well. So when I, when I went back to Spokane and Hilliard particularly, I was going to do my student teaching. It, it just wasn't going to be good, right? Like you put bad climate, just like right now, right? Like yeah. drugs and alcohol are on the rise. It was very similar. Most of my friends were either in jail or doing a lot more drugs. And, uh, you know, all the weekends were full of, you know, bar brawl stuff that I just didn't want to be a part of. So uh, a couple of my friends from college had internships in San Francisco. Um, and I hadn't really traveled a lot growing up, as you can imagine. Um, so I, uh, I decided to, to go down there and visit them over the summer. And it just was like night and day, you know, in the middle of the financial crisis, there was like every other car driving by was a Porsche. I saw a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. I can't remember parked on a like parked, not, not letting anyone attend it, just like parked on a meter. I was like, what, what is this place? You know, <laughs> um, this is probably where I should spend my time. And so I, I literally called the school up, said, I'm not gonna do my student teaching, um, packed everything I could fit into my, uh, parents, 86 Toyota forerunner, drove my stuff down to San Francisco, the, anything that could fit, sold every, everything else I could. And, um, you know, got my stuff down here, drove back and, you know, flew back. That was it. And I, uh, uh, I was on a mission to figure it out. And, you know, as a recent graduate in a down market, um, with a math degree that didn't want to teach anymore, what are you going to do? <laughs> I, I mean, I guess you sell shit, right? I, I guess. Right? So, you're doing so the I, math. You're doing the math. You're thinking I did the math on it. You know, I was like, how am I going to make money and live in San Francisco? I mean, I got to, I got to get, I got to get the sales, I guess. Uh, so, so I, um, you know, I did, I did what everyone did back then. It wasn't like LinkedIn and all that stuff. It was Craigslist, right? You go on Craigslist to get a job. So, you know, I did the Craigslist, find a job thing, did the interviews, did the multi-level marketing, almost got scanned to doing door to door sales. I did the whole walk around, like, you know, selling Comcast internet. It's like, you build your own business, right? That type of thing. <laughs> right. I did all of that to, to, to find a, finally stumble my way into, um, into a, a company that I was pretty excited about. Although, you know, looking back, I wasn't smart. I was just, looking for a job but um it was backed by aig so this is still two things oh, you know nice. 50 million dollar startup backed by aig it's got this really innovative product that could really help homeowner, homers at this time um you know uh, maybe help say, keep their house and all that stuff um well got that job uh eight weeks later the government pulled the financing and aig was one of those so our entire company was laid off overnight oh wow <laughs> like Boom, like there were maybe three people, but it was a blessing, right? It took me forever, like 50 job interviews, five got me to the end saying, I really wish you had some experience. Uh, finally got that one job. Now, I didn't know what I was going to do. It took me forever to get there. I was finally like, I was down to my life's like last penny. Again, I don't come from some home where, you know, mom sent me money. Like, wh where am I going to get the money, right? I'm gonna right. Have to figure this out. Uh, I, uh, I now had experience. I learned Salesforce. You know, we use Salesforce there. There was a really good lead engine program. And then I had a, I was ramping and I was hitting my numbers. So I had a reference from my, my job and, or from my boss, uh, my, my director of sales. And he introduced me to some recruiters. And like in one week I had three offers. Oh. So it was like, it was like, holy crap. Like this is literally the world's burning. I literally just got laid off. But now that I have sales experience, I have three job offers, right? So um, that, that's crazy? when I, you know, Mark Cuban says it best, right? Like, you know, if you can sell, you know, you never have to be worried about, I don't know what his exact quote is, but like you learn how to sell, you never have to worry about a job. Right? I, I know that quote. I love that. So that's when I fell in love with sales. It's like, wow, you know, uh, I, I, I now know a skill that 
you know, even in shitty markets, you know, I, I can actually use to, to make sure I'm, I'm not living in the gutter somewhere, right? It was always my biggest fear for a long time. So fear of the gutter, right? Fear of failure. So that's how I got into sales. Um, you know, fast forward, uh, now it's like, what well, it says 2008. So what, 12 years, coming on 13 years of experience. I've been, I, I grew up through the kind of, um, you know, uh, bootstrap startup to the funded startup. I went from being a rep to leading sales. Uh, you know, three of the companies that I led sales for have been acquired. One was a unicorn, one acquired by a unicorn. One was uh, Inc. 5000. Acquired was about to go public with the company got acquired and then the deal fell forward. But like, you know, I had some success of, of helping take companies that nobody knows about and then help them go get their first few million in revenue. That's kind of where I started to specialize in. And so I, um, I, uh, I use those skills to, uh, to start a company called Inside Sales Bootcamp uh, yeah. a couple, about six years ago. Um, and the goal there was to help people like myself kind of coming out of school, learn the skills to go land jobs at tech companies, you know, increase some diversity in tech, get more women, more underrepresented minorities into tech. That was kind of our mission. We were, yeah. um, uh, we were in like six different cities. It was all virtual. Um, and I built and sold that company to a company called Vendition. And then... Uh, then I started the sales developers, which um, I exited early, just at the end of last year, the company was acquired earlier this year. But um, most of the, most of my work and experience is in the tip top of the funnel working for, you know, the companies that no one knows about. So when it comes to why I love the phone and, and why I think it's such a powerful weapon is one, you get the skills you need to keep the job when things are bad, right? Because mm-hmm. if you can sell a company no one knows about in a market that sucks b- balls, excuse my friends, right? If, if you can do that, you're going to be okay. So that's that's why I love the top of the funnel. And then two, why I teach it and like so passionate about doing the things I do you see live is that I'm trying to influence others who are getting, you know, bamboozled or hoodwinked into not believing that the phone is an important skill set to learn. I do that because I hope that I can inspire them to pick up the phone and build those skills so that they can keep themselves, they can change their lives. Like I, like I, you know, was able to change mine. So that is awesome. That is awesome. And if, if I told you this, this might be part one or two, cause there's so much unpacking there. I, I was telling the team, I was like, you know, I didn't realize this until I was doing my little more research is there. I was actually a fan of your, I've been a fan of your now twice. Um, when we were talking about the, the boot camp. I, I thought that was the greatest idea ever because at my old agency, we were just running across people that had uh, these these managers or VP, you know, these leaders had these huge quotas and expectations for these cats coming out of college, but there was nobody training them. So it was like same results that, that we were required to have back in the day, right? Except we had training and they're just not investing in that. So it's one of the reasons why I'm sure that's why you train. It's why we train is because we want to we want to give back and, and pro- provide that. But I but I knew about your your previous company back then. I just didn't connect the dots until like about a month ago. So um, <laughs> thanks for sharing that story. <laughs> and I wish we could have yeah. uh, more time to, to unpack it and maybe we'll uh, down the road here. But I want to be respectful of our listeners and respectful of you. After we hung up, uh, after, our last, after our last visit, um, I told the team, I'm like, I'm on fire. I'm going to rip through a list. I'm just going to, I'm just going to prospect my buns off. Right. And then I picked up the phone and it happened away a lot more than I remembered, you know, and then it just got <laughs> heavier and heavier. And so we were joking earlier about, you know, you don't have that problem. You've got those big prospecting biceps, but what can you teach the rest of us about phone prospecting and how to get over that nervous feeling? Yeah. Uh, it's so funny. I wish I would have worn my, my shirt. Cause there's a Ronnie Coleman quote, you know, everybody want to be a bodybuilder, but nobody wants to lift those heavy ass weights, you know, <laughs> but I do, you know, if you ever, if you ever, uh, so it's one of my favorite quotes I have in my, I've never heard that. And I, I create, I created a little shirt that has um, a guy lifting the phone. It's like a, he's like a, in a shirt and he's using the phone. It kind of looks like he's lifting a, lifting a phone. Um, and it has Dude, if you, if you, back. if you have a shirt like that, all right, we just got a bunch in, um, I'll get your address and we'll do an exchange. Cause I would rock that shirt. I love that quote. Yeah. I'll, s- I'll send you a link. I'll send you a link. Uh, I have a code. I'll give it to you. You can get it. It'd be great. Um, but uh, so, so it's so funny. Cause that's exactly how it is for a lot of people, right? It's like, ah, oh, this thing kind of weighs a lot of money or a lot of weight. Uh, I don't know if, I don't know if I could do that. And everybody talks a big game about wanting mm-hmm. to, you know, oh, when someone says that, you should say this because, you know, you're going to have so much more success. So the first thing I tell people, in, and, I, and I preach this heavily, is you got to really understand your math of sales, right? And so your math of sales is your math of sales, and it helps you set a benchmark for what 
you need to be doing in order to reach your res the results you need to re reach, right? So what is your math of sales? Your math of sales is a really simple calculation to reverse engineer, you know, what it takes to get a deal on the door, right? So if you're, if you're full cycle rep, you know, what's your close rate? What's your sales accepted rate? Or, you know, when you have like, when you have a conversation, how, what percentage of those do you accept into your like forecast in your pipeline? What's your meeting show rate? When you book a meeting, you know, what would they show? What's your, what's your actual conversion rate on conversations to meetings? And then what's your dial to connect? Or if you're using other channels, what's your activity to response rate, like email response or connect or whatever, whatever channel you're going to use. When you know those metrics, then you know how many conversations you need to be having every single day to get to a sale. And more importantly, which a lot of people fail at, how many activities you need to do to get to those conversations, right? So your math of sales is your math of sales, right? Everyone sells to different segments, different markets, right? But, but the funnel is the same, right? Uh, you know, activities produce conversations, conversations produce meetings, meetings produce opportunities, opportunities close, right? We can, we, yeah. we can agree to that. And once you know those numbers, you actually have a nice little benchmark to hold yourself to so that you can realize that, hey, we just signed up for a job where I get kicked in the teeth 19 out of 20 times and that's okay. <laughs> and when you, it's okay. It's actually a part of the process, right? Your math sales, your math of sales. And if, if I'm actually able to get, if I'm actually able to have success knowing that, you know, that's, that's important, right? If I, if I can have success knowing that 19 out of 20 times I get kicked in the teeth, then um, that's a good thing. Now, if I look at that and it's like, it's impossible for me to get to their numbers, then you have to go and revisit and go talk to your management about like, Hey, you got to get me, you got to get me support, some support here, right? Uh, marketing, you got to help me warm up these leads a bit because cold calling is a bitch. And by the way, cold calling is the most expensive way to get a freaking lead in the door, right? I have a whole image back here that I can, if you follow me, you'll figure out what I'm talking about with this tornado, yeah. but it's like, you know, once you know your math of sales, you can really determine, hey, if these activity metrics make sense, and most of the time they don't, and that'll help you motivate you, you on those no's, right? The no's will make you stronger, and it's all part of the process, and you can start to optimize towards something I'm now calling completions from this book in the 80s someone sent to me, but I used to say conversations all that matter, but really it's completions, right? You need to, you need to actually talk to someone. There needs to be an exchange of why, a reason for why you're calling, and you need to have an idea of gauging their interest for a future follow-up or not. Right. And that's all it's, it's all about. It's all about the follow up. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Math of sales. Your math of sales never lies. And it will really help you get into a mindset where you you disassociate with meetings if you're an SDR or sales, you know, from the outcome. The outcome yeah. is I need to go and get completions. I need to get conversations and I need to get X amount of conversations every single day. And if I don't at some point in the future, I'm not going to be able to hit my number. And by taking that mindset, it'll actually motivate you to pick up the phone. It'll be lighter because it's like, dude, I, I got to get to 10 today. I don't it, most, and nine of them or, you know, 10 today, all 10 of them might be a no. That's fine. Cause tomorrow I need to get to that one, 19 out of 20, right? I need to get to that one every two days. You get that one. Yes. Instead of saying one, yes, you go, Hey, look, I got to get to 10, 10 every day. And it'll motivate you to get there. That's, that's, that's number one. And then number two is I create a system to help you kind of, you know, make it easier over time, right? So you're not always working the coldest shit. So I called a system called buckets. So work your buckets. Buckets are building a list of the people you actually want to talk to. The list is your strategy, right? Yep. And then, and then measuring, um, you know, where that list is in terms of engagement and uh, your likelihood to reach them, right? So if you take your math of sales and you take buckets, you combine those together, you have a nice little roadmap on, how do I spend my time in the right areas closest to revenue first? Mm -hmm. And, and as I'm optimizing for those conversations or completions, I can start to actually make it easier on myself. Right. You know, I can figure out if the phone does work for me. And by the way, the phone will work for everybody. It just takes a lot of fucking work up first. It's like a flywheel. You got to just build it and build it and build it. And you're just trying to find those people who will actually talk to you and they, they exist. They exist. I show it every day. They exist. Right. So you got to build your buckets, you build your buckets. And over time, it'll make it easier for you to get in front of the right people with the right message at the right time in their preferred channel. And so those are the things that I always preach uh, to help motivate people to want to pick up the phone because it's easier over time, right? That it, it, you know, but you just have to do it. It's like going to the gym, you know, going back to the analogy, right? Go to the gym, the thing will get lighter. You just got to do it daily. 
I love it. And for you poor bastards at home that are that are listening to this and in, in, in your car and not uh, <laughs> seeing what you're seeing, go check up our YouTube channel or closingmedia.com because we're staring at what uh, Ryan's talking about right now, and it's and it's it's just more impact. It, to me, it's more impactful when I can actually see it, you know, in in, in front of me. Um, okay, so I watch your videos constantly. I told you about this, um, but I, let's just assume that there's one person listening right now, or maybe two. Maybe two. Let's get let's get egregious here. Maybe two that have never <laughs> seen your videos. Um, uh-huh. Ring, ring, like let's role play with us and just kind of walk. I'd love for you to walk through your secret script that, that, that consistently works or would inspire me to take a meeting. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, sure. I, I actually run two different, two different scripts. Um, okay. So I can, I can go through both, both of them because I'm A-B testing. But uh, at Connect and Sell, we use something called the breakthrough script. Gotcha. So we can, we can start there. Uh, it's, people think it's cheesy, but it works. And then I can also share a second script if people want to have a second option um, that uh, Josh Braun influenced. So. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been seeing you there. Yeah. 27. I've been seeing that. So, but I, again, I, I'm going to pretend that, that there's someone out there that hasn't heard this. So I don't want to cheat them of, of, of that. So. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so you, you know, you, you picked up, right. So yeah. I, I, so by the way, the, when I'm calling with uh, the cold, the, the 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 live cold calls i'm using connect and sell so it's a little bit of a it's a cheat code as we call it right where like i don't actually have to dial it does the dialing for me and so what happens is i hear a beep in my ear yeah. it goes Boop, and the screen pops and so now i'd know it's you and i would just say hey this is ryan with connect and sell and i shut up and you really? say something <laughs> i say uh yeah <laughs> yeah and you say oh you know i know i'm an interruption I can, can i have 27 seconds to tell you why i called Sure. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. So I believe we've discovered a breakthrough that completely eliminates every single excuse you've ever heard from sales reps or gurus uh, for hiding behind email and not using the phone to practically sell and start new business conversations, especially right now during the pandemic. Uh, so the only reason I was reaching out was to see if I could find a few minutes on your calendar to share this breakthrough with you. Uh, do, do you happen to have your calendar available? Yes, yes, I do. Well, you made it too easy for me. Sure, what time works? So, so that's that's the breakthrough. Well, I, I I wanted to just hear it in print. Sorry, I I, I get I've, I've heard this, but can we unpack that for a second before we get to the second the second sure. one? Yeah, because I, I just wanted people to hear it, right? And if I, how many times does this like? How many times do I say sure? Like I I kind of you know kind of give you a softball, but how many times does my response happen? Or or what's maybe maybe break down like that and then where do people usually get hung up? Like, eh, I don't know. What's this about? Yeah. 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 So, so, so there's a lot of psychology in the breakthrough script, which, um, you know, if you, if you Google uh, five sentences that will change your life, uh, by Chris Beal, uh, five sentences that'll change your life. It talks about the psychology of the breakthrough script. This has existed for, I think since like 16 or something like that. 2016 mm-hmm. is when he wrote it, but he got together with a, um, uh, uh, linguistic psychologists and they spent hours crafting every sentence here right there's psychology here around the whole thing right so um the i know i'm an interruption uh can i have 27 seconds to tell you why i called like literally uh, agreeing or telling someone that you know with with authority that you're interrupting them is uh is helping build trust right so when you cold call someone and they pick up the phone uh you're the problem so you're admitting that you're the problem and building some trust. And then you're also offering a solution to get them, you know, to solve the problem that you just said you had, right? Which is, I only going to take specifically 27 seconds. And if you look at that whole script and you time it, if I do it the right way with the right speed and cadence, it's going to take right around 27 seconds. So it's specific, right? The only wow. reason like, it goes right in there. So there's psychology in there and you can use this with success at the top of the funnel pretty predictably uh, by just using the exact same sentence. But, you know, el- you know, when you go into the breakthrough itself, that completely eliminates, you put in the problem you solve, right? And the way you want to solve it. Um, but there's psychology there. Uh, the uh, breakthrough statement itself, uh, I don't I don't know all the details of this. You know, you can read on this, but I mean, with an in interest of time, um, the, the belief in the breakthrough is about intrigue, right? Mm-hmm. And not focusing on the product, or the, um, the service offering, right? I don't talk about connect and sell at all. I'm talking about the problem. And I believe there's a breakthrough to this problem that you probably have because they did a good job targeting you in the first place. So, um, and I leave it with intrigue, right? Huh, that's interesting. And I'm gonna say, hey, I'm not trying to talk to you about this right now. Remember, I only asked for 27 seconds. So the only reason I was calling is to see if we could talk about this at a later time. 
and and then and then go for a specific ask, right? Do you happen to have your calendar available like right now? Let's go ahead and book it. So there's a bunch of psychology built into that, and the framework is set up in such a way that um, is helping build trust, um, you know, build intrigue, and then uh, it is an appointment setting script, right? So there's no qualifications, there's nothing there. The whole point is qualification would be done in your list in the first place. So if I got you on the phone, I know I want to talk to you. Um, I've already done the reason for that. Now, if you want to continue, you asked about like the continuation on that. I, hmm. In my live streams, I track this stuff daily. I got a whole breakdown. Josh Braun has had some stuff. It's all color coded. You can look at how things go through the funnel and like the open, the pitch, the close, and what percentage drop off. But, um, you know, there's a lot of, I call them the haters out there about the 27 seconds. I didn't use it for a long time. I connect and sell now. So it's what we use. It's kind of the branding of it. Um, there's not that much drop off, right? Most people do like what you did. They'll say, <laughs> so, you know, and it, it gets you laughing a little bit, right? And then you kind of chuckle back with them. And, you know, some people do hang up, but I mean, that happens on, it's a cold call, right? You get hung up on, it happens. Uh, but a good portion of those calls are going to continue to get, allow you to at least go. Um, on average, the breakthrough script for me since January has converted at, uh, about 9% from a, really? this is from cold call. So, and I have, I mean, I have all the data. I mean, talk to like over a thousand people, right? So 9% of the time that I deliver that it will result in a meeting. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll take a 9% conversion, uh, any day on most channels, um, you know, all day long. So that's great. So before we get into the next one, so, so two questions I have for you about psychology, you said psychology. I noticed you started laughing, you know, you, you kind of went, <laughs> you know, there was like a, la like a laugh. Is that part of it too? Cause I laughed or like, tell us about that. Like what it's actually, it's actually written in the, it's actually written in the, it's actually written in the script, like chuckle here, right? You're trying to, it. yeah, you're trying to humanize the conversation. Yeah. And here's the little side psychology question. Why do you love the phone so much? I don't want to break us from this dialogue, but like on our last conversation, I got off the phone with everyone. I said, you know, we've never ever had a, a guest like this. And they said, oh boy, three years you've been, you, you've, I've heard this before. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. He loves the phone. Why do you love the phone? Well, I mean, I, I, I spoke to some of the reasons earlier. I mean, I, I think it's, I mean, if you look at uh, you know, skills that will make sure that you're, you're continuously increasing your earning capacity and, and up leveling yourself, uh, public speaking and conversations are, you know, always at the top of that list, right? The most difficult thing to do is to interrupt a stranger and, and talk with them, right? Mm -hmm. And have a meaningful conversation. If you can master this skill, um, then, then you can separate yourself from, you know, many, many, many other people. And as digital transformation evolves, like this is the differentiator right? Mm -hmm. The future of sales is around selection and implementation. Right? I mean, that's really it, right? Otherwise, you got a buy button, right? So if you yeah. personally cannot differentiate yourself from everything else or a buy button, this is a Noah, Noah Goldman thing, um, you're going to be out of work. And so, you know, hiding behind email, you know, dealing with chat and text and all that stuff can be done by a bot. And it already is being, ha it already is being done by a bot. So, <laughs> The reason why I love the phone is that it's it's a difficult skill. Uh, it's a, it's something that you can always get better at. I mean, I, I always get better at it. Like there's not there's not anyone in the world that's so good at cold calling that they're going to convert 100% of the cold conversations. It's just it's not going to happen. So how do you get that continuous improvement? How do you learn from, you know, how to react to certain tones and personalities. Like there's just so much complexity in it that I can say the exact same, I could say this exact same script, this exact same script, these exact words, which I've changed the breakthrough from my own because I target only CEOs a little bit, but the, the whole hide behind and all that stuff, the, the guru thing. Um, but that exact same script, I could say over and over and over and over again. And every time I say it, my skill set is, is, is actually, I'm improving my skill set based on my ability to read and recognize the tone and the, the actual responses that I'm getting over the phone, right? And so it's like this game that you play. It's not just the words you say, it's how you say them, when you say them, how fast you say them, all that stuff. Um, it just, it's just a really fun equation to solve for me. And plus, it's also the only channel that I can really optimize by having conversation, right? Every, the whole point of sales is to get a conversation. So 
why the hell wouldn't I love having a bunch of conversations all the time? Right? I mean, and that's, that's what it's all about. Any of our teammates or people that know or that are part of the closest community, um, I, that was a loaded question and I apologize. <laughs> I wanted to hear that version out loud because that is one of our biggest uh, uh, hurdles that we have to get over when we take on a new client, whether it's you know us helping pipeline develop our coaches or we're, we're training our system. I, I just, people really struggle. They go, ah, it's either they lie to themselves and say, no, no one picks up the phone these days, you know, or I can automate that or whatever, which I'm not against automation in, 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 in some capacity, but like you said, you know, how are you going to differentiate yourself? And not only that, but GDRP and all these other things that are coming over here are going to take the automation away in some capacity. I don't really know how, but in some capacity, as I've heard, when you can have the ability to pick up the phone, um, you can make fire with your hands. We always, we try and inspire people to, to have that, but I'm so with you. And I just wanted you to say it. So some of our listeners right now, maybe whether they're considering hiring us or you, or they're on the fence, or they just, they just don't want to pick up the phone that they can hear that. Yes, it's hard at first, but like you said, you fall the same thing. All that is activity now. You know what I mean? No, granted you're epic at it. Cause you've been doing this forever, but they can be pretty good too. And all you got to do is just pick it up and act and pick it up and act. You know what I mean? And um, man, yeah, I, just, I mean, it's, really it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the flywheel. And, and by the way, so like the phone is the phone, the channel now, eventually the phone will go away. All these assumptions, like just like, you know, email will probably die too because of all the, I mean, Google's super smart. And if you're spammy doing spammy things, you get shut down pretty fast, right? Like yeah. there's a lot of things that'll shut you down quickly. Um, there's nothing wrong with being able to turn a sentence. Um, you know, that's, it's great. You know, if you, if you, if you can write really well and email works for you, fantastic. The, the thing is that's not sales. We're talking about sales right now and sales starts with the conversation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sales development, you know, the appointment setting script itself is still marketing in a sense, right? It's conversational marketing. If you want to look at it that way, yeah. but, but I can turn it into a sales conversation quickly. You know, so I, I, I do this live all the time, like while I'm cold calling, and this is why I think sales development so broken and, and the, the, the optimization towards meetings so broken is, is that that handoff process breaks the, the jive, right? The, the, the trust, the credibility, all that stuff. And you have, you have people that don't know what they're doing, having the first conversation with somebody that you really want to have a conversation with that, 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 that makes it very hard and it's a bad experience for the buyer. But for me, I cold call only CEOs all day. That's all I'm doing is calling CCCOs all day long. And one of the, the common things I get is like, I never pick up the phone. They always say that. I never pick up the phone. I was like, wait, did you pick up the phone? Say, yeah, well, you caught me there. Okay, well, now we've been talking for 30 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. We're already having a conversation. I don't give a shit about a meeting at the point. And, and, and for the purposes of running the process and going through the whole gimmick you know, gimmick of, of appointment setting, right? It was like, of course, I'm going to ask for the meeting, ask for the meeting. But I just had the meeting. I just had a 30-minute conversation about what you're doing, what's working, what's not working, you know, what you're trying to do with your business, you know, all these things are happening from a cold call, right? Because I transitioned a cold call into a sales conversation. And um, if you can master that skill, it's not about the cold call itself. I mean, this could be an actual meeting, a sales, a sales meeting. I'm not afraid to ask hard questions. I'm not afraid to probe into the areas that you need to probe into because shit, I'll cold call you and ask these questions. You agreed to this meeting. At least I can start asking that. And that skill set transitions it translates perfectly into the entire sales process right and it all starts with the opening i mean some of the best sales people will tell you that i'm sure you guys probably talk about this all the time i mean maybe maybe not but opening opening is where the closing's at right like you've got to be able to gather all of this information and i'm gathering mm -hmm. a lot more and the phone allows me to gather a lot more faster, more efficiently, more effectively than doing those other things. And I don't waste time down funnel with the wrong opportunities and the wrong people with the wrong information because I've mastered the skill of the phone and especially the skill of the cold call. I told or I'm you mastering. Closers. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I mastered it yet. I'm still mastering, right? I'm still mastering, I'm still a student of the, the game. The day we think we're the best salesperson in the world is the day we are not, <laughs> right? I told you closers, I told you this is a very special guest. I thank you, Ryan, for, for that. And I know that I took you off your game, you know, going to the next uh, uh, script, which we can get to, but I, I just really want to, uh, how much I appreciate that. Cause one of the, one of the, you're right. One of the things that we always say is if we don't pick up the phone or we don't leverage the phone in our, in our pipeline development activities and somebody says yes, or you show up to that first scheduled meeting that you got through email or whatever, how, how could you not be nervous? Right? Like, how do you, how could you not? You, there's been no conversation, there's been no dialogue. Um, I think it just puts people at a disadvantage. So, thank you for, 
<laughs> I hope you back me up on that one. Um, yeah, no, wanna... for sure. I mean, there's nothing wrong with those other channels for generating leads, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's lead generation, this demand gen, this marketing, you know, exactly. sales sale starts with the conversation. So why wouldn't I want to reduce the amount of time it takes me to get into a sales conversation? That's, I mean, if you're a professional salesperson, then that should be your goal. At least that's what I kind of preach all the time, eliminating all the waste. And eliminating the waste means... You know, I can I can automate out all those other things that get me to a conversation faster. And shoot, if people want to book with automation and on my meeting, fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that. And you should use mm -hmm. every channel possible. But you're exactly. missing out on a substantial part of the market if you don't pick up the phone and call. Right? You just yeah, you I, just are. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, did you want to go through the the the, the other script? I I, I, I can I, I can if you want. So so Josh Josh jumped on in one of my live sessions and and he he's got a he's got an influence from um, Chris Chris Voss. Uh, Never split the difference. He, he does yes. a lot of work does a lot of work with him. And so uh, mm -hmm. you know this is much more of a conversational starter. And when he was listening to me run the breakthrough, he's like, man, like it seems like sometimes it's a list thing, which is true. It's just like, hey, they don't want to take a meeting because. Mm -hmm. But it also seems like once you get past the 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 uh, the gimmick, the the, the pitch, uh, the initial the breakthrough, uh, that you open up conversations and you're and you're so much better into the conversations. So he gave me like while I was streaming live, he gave me a sentence, and we've been optimizing this a little bit, and I threw it in here, um, and I've been A/B testing it. This particular script has actually been um, for a period of time. I, don't, I haven't run the data uh, back this last month. There's been a lot going on, but for a period of time, it actually doubled my my conversion rate. So I was, I was actually converting at like 20%, 18% of my what? cold calls using this script. Again, oh. calling only CEOs. And if the target's there, just, uh, you know, getting better and better with time, you know, CEOs are the right types of companies with salespeople. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, then, then this, this has been working pretty well. So again, beep, Hey, you know, I, I, I hear, I hear a beep. I just say, Hey, this is Ryan with connect to sell and I'll shut up. And you'll do whatever you're gonna do, and we can get into it. Hey, this is Ryan with Connect to Sell. Uh, hi, Ryan. What, what what's going on? Hey, yeah, you know, I know I'm an interruption. Can I have 27 seconds to tell you why I called? Uh, what's? Yeah, sure. Go go nuts. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. So, so the reason I'm calling is is we're showing CEOs a different approach for keeping your sales reps' calendars full with the people you want them to be in front of. Does that sound like something you'd be open to learning more about in the next week or two? Well, we, we have a marketing team, so I, I think we're good. Oh, fantastic. So uh, just out of curiosity, the marketing team's keeping your, your reps calendar full? I don't know what you mean by, sorry, this is great. I, I don't know what you mean by that. I, 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 we have a marketing team and they, they're, they're, their job and why we hire them is to, 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 to generate leads. That, that's yeah. what you're talking about, right? Not really. Yeah. So before we go down the path, but you can see how this gets into a conversation, right? So I now, so, so you're literally like that. There's literally the, there's either a yes or a no. And either way, it's like, if it's not a post, fantastic. Let's go book the appointment. But if it is, it's like, Hey, just out of curiosity and you're just, you're just going. So if they want to keep talking, I'm gathering information. I'm having conversations. So you get my point. Like there's all sorts of stuff that can happen from that call, but now I know, okay, you have a marketing team and, you know, I, I could start asking some questions and probing and this is where I was getting into the whole, there's personalities. I can kind of get how fast you're moving. Is this someone who wants to talk? You're trying to get me off the phone. I can work that, but now I'm in a conversation. And so because of that, um, that tend to have a higher conversion rate for me. But I think the difference is for me, because all I, I don't really care about the meeting. And I was telling Josh that as well. It's like, I don't care about the meeting. I want completions. I want to gather information. Do you have a sales team? Are you investing in growth? Do you believe you have enough? Like the, the question around like, oh, so it's keeping your, sounds like, sounds like your marketing team's doing a great job or whatever. You start to start to get into that conversation where I'm gathering information, but I'm also able to, um, you know, keep the conversation alive. And basically that's my discovery call, right? On a yeah. cold call. And, and if you listen in, if you listen to my live, the, there's several calls that go 20, 30, 40 minutes. I'm just, they're going, I'm talking, they're going, I'm handling, I'm asking questions. And, you know, I have a whole meeting and at the end, a lot of those, almost all of those will result in another meeting, right? It was like, Hey, it sounds like you got to run. Let's continue this conversation. So, um, but that, that's the purpose of that script. And it, it has converted at about two X uh, for me. I can see why. I mean, just how you, 
Now, granted, I wasn't trying to like make this a you know a cockfight here or anything, but it was just it was it's interesting how you navigate it when you go yeah, you're not 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 really like that right there. If we were if I was if you were reaching out of the blue, I'd be like, well, what do you mean by that? You know what I mean? Like that's I can see where the conversation gets pulled out. It's brilliant. It's you brilliant. just want to get into the conversation, right? And I mean, by the way, sometimes like sometimes that person is just going to hang out. Now we're good. We have a marketing. Link. Guess what? I learned something here. I learned two things. One, you pick up the phone, which is the most important thing because mm -hmm. if you pick the phone, I can go and try lots of different messaging over time until I get you on the hook. Two, I learned you already have a marketing team. So you pick up the phone, you have a marketing team. My list should already be pretty good anyway, but now I can also leverage that in my follow-up. But now I can follow up with an email right away. I can do a LinkedIn request. I could do a video, which is I would do if you seem like a company that I want to do business with. And you, 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 you hung up quickly, you'll do the self-deprecation like you talked about. Hmm. I'd go in, I'd go to their, their LinkedIn profile as the CEO, I'd, I'd do a video, I'd be on his profile, his face is there, I'm there. And I say, hey, cold calls suck, but we gotta do them, right? And if your team's not, if your marketing team's so good at keeping your calendar full, what if, what if they could also, and like I could show some data, I could do whatever I wanted in the little research that I did. But I now know you pick up the phone and I can invest a little bit of extra time to get you to engage on a couple extra channels. And when I do my follow-up again, well, you pick up the phone. When you pick up the phone, you pick up the phone again. That's just that's just how it works. People who pick up the phone tend to pick up the phone again. And I can reference that and it's in my notes. And it's like, hey, we spoke the other day, you know, sounds like your marketing team's doing a phenomenal job. I don't know if I don't know if you saw it and I maybe if, if I don't have the connection across data back right, but I, I sent you a, a personalized video. And the reason I'm the reason why I'm persisting to tell you why I think there's an opportunity is because, right? And I can get back into the conversation, right? I get, is because. You know, have you thought about this? Have you whatever it is, right? But I'd only do that if and only if I think there's a fit. So just because you hung up on me and you say you got a marketing lead, that's not a bad, that's not a it's completion, right? I delivered my message. You said, hey, you got a marketing team. It wasn't fully complete, but like directionally, hey, you're investing in lead generation. Great, let's have a conversation because if you're in investing in lead generation, I probably can help, right? You know, so I wanna to continue to have that conversation. That's fantastic. That was the, that was my, gonna be my follow-up is just, this is follow-up, you know what I mean? It's, it's your, your follow-up cadence, um, but you answered that. That's, that's you always looking for You're always looking for a yes, a no, a not me, a not now. That, that's, that's it, right? So yes, we're going to take a meeting on a cold call. Fantastic. I got that. And I can go do mm -hmm. my deep research, right? I'm not doing a ton of research ahead of this, right? There's not a lot of research. Like it's persona based. Let's go have a conversation, see what happens. So yes, get a meeting. Then I'll do my research and come up prepared. A no, a hard no. That's a great thing. That's a great thing. I got to know. I got you out. Now I know because. And now if, if research can get some of that stuff out ahead of time and I can start to learn that from research, great. Get that shit out ahead of time. But a no is a good thing, right? A yes or no. A not me got to get those referrals, right? If it's not you, who is it? And now I can reinform my targeting. Am I targeting the wrong people? Is it just them within this organization or whatever it might be? And then a not now, which is the majority of these people is, hey, this isn't a priority, but if I got the information, when do I follow up? For follow-up cadence, never longer than a quarter, right? So I read it, wrote another ebook called Math of Sales, Market Domination with CEO of Connect to Sell, right? You got to talk to everyone every quarter, period. That's what you do. Right, so you never wait more than a quarter to have another conversation. You find an excuse to reach out, even if they said next year, whatever. That's not true, likely. Even if it is true, and you feel confident with that, you should still check in. Things change. Businesses change a lot. COVID. Who the hell knows what's going to happen tomorrow? A quarter is like a, a decade. Like right. never longer than a quarter. Okay, never longer than a quarter. And then if it's stated a time for follow up, like hey, call me back in, you know, call me back next month, then you put your task in cut it in half, right? Always cut it in half. So, you know, next quarter is six weeks. Uh, you know, next, next week's is three business days, right? Like you always cut it in half. Tomorrow is 12 hours from now because well, it is tomorrow. But, and the reason for that is when you go to pick up the phone and call somebody and have the conversation, it, it takes more than one attempt most of the time. And even if it doesn't, time again, it's just crazy. It's one of these warp things. It's Monday. It feels like it's Friday, right? I don't remember what happened yesterday. Oh, it was Sunday. I mean, it just time, time flies and more than a week is a long time in business. A, a month is a, 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 like an eternity, a quarter is a, a decade. Like you got to think of that landscape, right? Um, and people are always tasking out, oh, next quarter, they're, they're going next year, next year, next year. It's too much time. It's yeah. way too much time between, especially if you didn't get enough information. But even if you do, never more than a quarter. Um, 
you know, I want to be respectful of time, man. I could have uh, this, anyone, any closers out there that that we're going to have in, in, in the chat over here. If we want Ryan back and he'll grace us with his presence. I mean, I uh, I think this is the fastest episode, I think, in, in closers history. But um, <laughs> I did have one really quick one just because um, I think I told you this when we were kind of prepping is a lot of our clients are uh, startup founders, uh, new, to, new to sales or stalled in sales. Do you know what I mean? So it's a lot of non sales esque people. Um, or the people that, that we are serving that are in sales are just stalled. They've just hit a, they've just kind of hit a wall. Um, for the ones that don't have the luxury of connect and sell, and I know you've talked about follow-up, but, but a question I have is more on the front end of, we get a lot of, who do we call? Now we have our pro, like how, how we think we should do it, but I'm a student of sales too. Um, for those people that don't have the luxury of having an awesome tool, by the way, awesome tool in connect and sell, how would a startup founder or how would somebody kind of new to sales know where to aim their gun. Mm -hmm. uh, so buckets, right? So uh, you build your buckets, right? You know, you eat the elephant one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and as you build your buckets, uh, it's going to take you longer to build those buckets, right? Uh, but you know, you can you can pick up the phone and use a spreadsheet, right? You can use your cell phone and spreadsheet, build your buckets, um, and over time you can start to get to. A list of people who pick up the phone. When they pick up the phone, you know your dial to connect is going to be less than ten. When it's cold, you've never talked to them before. It could be the 40s, 50s, or 60s before you get one conversation. So, what you're doing, and this is a little tip, right? First time you call someone, make sure that you document the path. So, what's the type of the phone? Is this a direct line? Is it an IVR? Is it a gatekeeper? Right? Um, you document the path. If it's an IVR or a gatekeeper, you can gather, gather things like the gatekeeper's name, put it in your damn CRM, the path, press one, three, four, seven pound, put it in your damn CRM. So the next time it's as fast as a direct dial. So you're not waiting through, you know, when I dial that number, I know it's an IVR and I know to press eight, seven, three, four pound. That's going to ring and, you know, get through to a voicemail, which is probably going to happen more often than not in 30 seconds instead of two minutes. You do that over time, you save yourself lots of time, right? So call, document the path, put it in your spreadsheet or CRM, whatever. And over time, you can start to move from uncontacted leads to working leads. These work to working leads with documented data, you can also bucket them into uh, outcome. The outcome is connect validated, they pick up, that'll move you to priority. Validated, did they record their voicemail? Did, did they record their name in their voicemail? Well. If they, if they take the time to program their name, they're probably more likely, this is the data shows they're more likely to pick up the phone. So that, yeah. that lead I'm gonna prioritize over a not validated, meaning I can get through, it looks like I dialed their last name, I think, but it was generic, it wasn't programmed. So that's a not validated dial versus bad. Obviously don't, don't ever call a number that's bad ever again, just get that shit out, right? So yeah. as you're going through and you're building your buckets, you're actually, you're figuring out who has a propensity to pick up the phone. Those who pick up the phone will pick up the phone again. So you prioritize those for your follow-ups right away, even if they hung up, right? Until you have a conversation, until you have a completion, you follow up. And unless they told you no, hard no, they're disqualified, not a good fit for you, you call them every quarter, right? So it doesn't take long. People think it takes a long time. It's just a lot of work up front. It's a lot of work up front, mm -hmm. but you could take a list of thousands and whittle them down to hundreds in a matter of a few months, right? And then you get to that list of hundreds hundreds who actually have a propensity to pick up. And now all of a sudden you're having four, five, six, seven, eight conversations an hour, right? So that's what you do. If you want to fast forward all that, then you buy connect and sell, right? It'll, you know, you have <laughs> I, I was... that. But if you want to do it by yourself, that's what you do. You pick up the phone and you, you make 50 dollars to talk to one and you start to weed out the ones that don't have a good chance to pick up and you build your buckets over time. I love it, man. Um, all right, we got to go. And I got to, we got people to chat, uh, no doubts. Uh, you, you know, chomping to get to the, the face, the uh, closed community page. But, um, uh, you know, one, I want to ask, I want to, I want to definitely give people the opportunity to connect with, with you um, in a second, but one last, just final question for our closed community is mindset. I told you a lot of these people, uh, they're in different spots, right? But, but all of them hate cold <laughs> They're all like, that's the one thing they all have in common. Um, you've given us a lot of nice uh, quotes from other people, right? Like really cool sound bites. But what's the Ryan Reisart like soundbite that somebody listening to this can be like, well, Ryan says, do you have like a sound, like, like your own quote that we can, that you can pass, pass on to us. So when we hit the wall or we hit a skid, we can hear your voice motivating us to get, to blow through it. <laughs> Next. Uh, 
you know, next, right? Uh, I tell, so Sean, Sean Cease is a, a you know, a former, uh, he, he was a student of the book and became a, 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 a he worked at, with us at the sales developers, he followed me around here. You know, we have a saying, it's just like next, right? You just have to, you just have to kind of have that mindset of next, right? If you're working in a very, very, very small, and I'm talking like 100 person TAM, right? Maybe, maybe have a, a fear of all this stuff, but most people could sell to a lot more than a hundred people. So, cause even that one person who had a bad day, you don't even know yet when you had a bad call, it's probably not as bad as you think. So kind of next, right? Next, 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 right? Mm -hmm. um, that, that's what, that's what I try to stand for. And then obviously, um, you know, for me personally, uh, it's not like a saying, but, um, and again, I just like to, I, I pull from everybody. That's how I learn, right? Uh, you know, the nose will make you stronger. I pulled that from, um, I know you asked for me, but like the nose will make you stronger. I literally do push ups after every connect, right? It just gets <laughs> the moment motivation going. But whether it's a yes, no, not me or not now, I, I celebrate with some push ups. So, um, you know, try to do things that uh, that will keep you focused on the objective. And, and um, the biggest thing for me is math of sales, right? If you don't know your numbers, all this stuff's going to mentally fuck yourself, right? So, okay. know your numbers learn your math of sales, your math of sales never lies. There's my quote. I say that all the time. Your math of sales never lies. So get there, understand it. And the only way you're going to get there is by doing, right? Get out there, get it done, do it live. Your math of sales never lies. How about that? Oh, dude, I respect you so much. Your love for the craft is contagious. Um, I, Mm, I could I could let this go on for days, but uh, we we can't unfortunately. So, um, where can people find you? What you know, connect and sell. But like, what can people buy from you? How can we, the closer community, support you? Because you've given us so much today. So, how can we support you? <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Um, so, I I mean, I'm on LinkedIn. It's my big channel. I I just launched a Patreon community for people right. who want more access. Uh, I, I, you know, it's, it's new, it's brand new. Uh, it's a couple people in there now. So there's two options in there. You'll get, you know, free shirts and books and all the stuff that I put out will be in there. So you can, you can join the Patreon. I got Twitch same similarly. You can go and follow me on Twitch and, um, um, you'll get access to all my live feeds. So I'm on Twitch every single day. Uh, and then, um, you know, on and off between other channels with the live stream, but Twitch every single day. Uh, now um, streaming live and while I'm live, live conversations come in between between connects. So it's a pretty fun interactive community to be a part of and it's growing. So um, uh, come join me there. I think Allison put this in the uh, slide or the chat, but uh, let's make sure we get those links in there. We'll have we'll, we'll put them in there for the closers to uh, click on and then we'll we'll put it in the newsletter follow up to this so that people can can support you and, and learn from you because I've learned a lot today. Uh, Fantastic. Thank you for Thanks being for having honest. me. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Well, for those um, if, who are who are with us live, we're going to hop over to the uh, Closest Community Facebook page in just a second. Um, we're going to have uh, there. We're going to have some live Q and A. Um, if you guys will join us next time, we're going to have Daniel Disney on. Uh, we're really excited about that. Um, you know, subscribe to the newsletter. We'll keep you guys in, informed. And if anything that you heard of today um, kind of sparked some interest, hit us up at closersmedia.com. And then, like I said, make sure that you hit up these uh, these links and and support Ryan because he is a pillar in our community and we're so gracious and so grateful, sorry, to have you on the show. So thanks for joining us, brother. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely. Talk to you soon. Closers, we'll see you in the, in the Closers community Facebook page. Cheers. Cheers. All right. So what do we think? What'd you learn? Well, if you like that, check out coffeeclosers.com for upcoming episodes, recordings, and more. And don't forget to check out our sponsors. Each one has been hand-selected. They're best in class. Until next time, we'll see you at the next Coffee and Closers. Cheers. Say live, come on live, live a life we love. Gotta live, I said live, live a life we love.